Hey everybody and welcome back to another episode of Weiwo.tv. Today on the show we have Tom Constantino from the Orville. We also have a musical performance by Twisted Mister. Gonna go ahead and let that name speak for itself. Let's uh, head on over to Happy Harem in New York, home of the George Carlin Podcast Studio and our host, Mr. BJ Mendelson. Let's get it. Tom, thank you so much for joining me on this edition of Weiwo TV. Um, would you take a moment to introduce yourself and what you work on? What are you currently uh, working on? I am uh, Tom Costantino, and I am the co-producer and supervising editor of The Orville, which no. happens to be in season three. Yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, so wait, let me ask you, so is it proper to refer to it as season three, or is it the proper name like New Horizons? Is there a preference? Uh, yeah, I guess the preference is New Horizons, but we also call it season three. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's funny. I, uh, I don't know. <laughs> and I work here. <laughs> So I, I had this conversation with my dad because, you know, it, it, we'll get into this in a second, like the, what brought about this conversation. Yeah, yeah, of course. But when, when I was telling him uh, that the Orville was back, he was like, yeah, but it's called New Horizons. So is it like a new different show? And I said, I, I, I'm just treating it like season three. <laughs> like that's just how I went. It, it's no, like, you should. It, it, it's uh, it's funny because I think like, you know, I think Seth finally gave an interview about it. It's like it's not like it, there was like years of deliberating it. It was <laughs> Dana suggested it and they were like, oh, that's a good idea. I mean, you know, it was like it was that I mean, Dana also, I, you know, th- this was like one of her great contributions is that the show used to be called the Orville. And uh, and, it, I'm, and like that scene in the, you know, in the in the social network, it's like Dana just came in and went. Add the the, <laughs> <That's right. laughs> and it, and it and it sounded great, and and I can't imagine the show being called Orville. So right, like one of those. Yeah, no, it's it's definitely it's hit such a chord. And one of the things I really like is that you are very front and center with the fans. Like you're always very interactive with them. You, um, when I was doing the research for this interview, you, like there's a ton of interviews to watch. Uh, oh God, I'm sorry. No, no, it was I. <laughs> I enjoyed it. Like I love the show. Um, I love the work that everyone does. Uh, but I'm curious, like what what drives that? Like what is what what made sorry, you want? To, oh no, it's like, what made you want to be like the sort of the ambassador almost? Oh what? well, it, I mean, it kind of came about organically. I I started doing some posting. Uh, I mean, I guess this fine. You know, I can say all this now. Is so I started doing some posting. And uh, the Fox team, who is amazing, was sort of doing some posting. You know, they were like making commentary and doing their social media stuff. And, you know, Seth knew that I knew the show. And um, he kind of just sort of suggested it to me. And sort of like one day I just woke up and he uh, he um, he tweeted out, you know, follow Tom and um you know, I, I just started realizing I just started, like, I just, I never, you know, I'm a f- big fur, ne- uh, nerd fan myself. So I just started, like, taking some pictures and just started doing some stuff, and no one seemed to say no. So it was sort of <laughs> starting to happen, and the fans were, like, super nice, and I met a few at the first, you know, my phone, first Comic-Con was 2017. And uh, he, he put out, I just remember, put out this tweet, and suddenly I had, a, I had like, a 1,000 followers, <laughs> I, extra followers, and I had, like, 120 followers. I'm like, oh, wow, th- okay. And, and that was the middle of season two, or like early season two or somewhere. I, sorry, I don't remember exactly. <laughs> and then, you know, I got my little blue check, which sort of like legitimized me in the social media sphere. And, you know, and then I just kind of made it a thing, you know, for a while, you know, they, I, I've, I, you know, most of it's not for pay. And I, I can't say they haven't ever not paid me to do anything, but, um, sure. you know, it's sort of the love and Seth is great and he lets me kind of. I mean, obviously, a lot of these like more you know more sensitive posts. He uh, he, I, I run through them, make sure. But but uh, I mean, sensitive from a spoiler standpoint. But uh, yeah, no, it's 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 the best part of the job. It's like I, I just get to do it all myself, and I it brings me lots of pleasure. And the fans are great. Yeah, that was a uh, long see, answer. Sorry. No, that that was that was great. Um, so wait, your first Comic Con was twenty seventeen with the show. Like, was that with the, the first show. time? That, what I, was I've that always, like? Uh, it was like. You know, I kind of always wanted to go, but like, I just don't go to those things. I, I don't know. I just, I, I never make the time or it's just like my, I just, it's like one of those things I always admired from afar. Um, you know, I'm very private about how I play with my little toys and stuff, but, uh, you know, uh, and then I got to go, like they had extra badges and they, they let it, they invited us down and, you know, got to hung out and see it for the first time up close. So uh, I'm kind of glad that's, that was my first you know, foray into it. And we had all the yeah. big, all the big, you know, there was like, it was a first year promotion. So we were all over the place. 
Yeah, no, I, that must have been wild, like, to yeah. see the thing that, that you spent so much time on. Yeah, yeah. Um, did I see this correctly that when you, you got the job on the Orville by uh, referencing a Next Generation episode, Chains of Command, is that right? That is that is true, yes. Because, uh, oh, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, no, go ahead. No, because so often, when, the, the thing that drew me to Orville, so I, you know, I'm a millennial, but my siblings are all like Gen Xers, right? Yeah, so, yeah. so I grew up with the next generation because they were all watching it. Like that was right. the thing that was always, and so often the Orville feels like a love letter to the next generation. Uh, so I, I'm just curious, like, what was that conversation like? Like, when did you, when, when did you bring up Chains of Command? And what oh, it- <laughs> uh, well, I mean, the, it was sort of funny. I mean, like, I got recommended from a producer that I work with on Heroes Reborn and this other show called Dig with Jason Isaacs. This little, this show that was for USA that I love that show. And I, I actually, my family knows Jason personally, so like, I'll do anything for that guy. But, um, uh, yeah, no, I, she recommended me and I had my first, my first interview was with Brandon, Brandon Braga. And I was just like, I had to be like, okay, I have to pretend this is a job interview. Cause I'm like, you're the Star <laughs> yeah. Trek guy. And like, you know, obviously we don't, we're not that way now. He's like, he's like, he's like, you know, great to work for a great friend. But, um, you know, they liked my editing stuff. They knew I had a lot of VFX. They obviously knew I understood and loved the genre, so therefore could, uh, you know, see it from all angles. And uh, I guess they interviewed a bunch of people. And then I got to the big interview with Seth and John Favreau, and we talked about work for five minutes. And then suddenly we pivoted to Star Trek, and that was it. And I just started, and I just, I don't know, my brain just sort of turned off. I stopped interviewing and just started talking. <laughs> and they asked me what my favorite episode was and it, you know i had a few but jane of command was for some reason i don't know why there were four lights was at the top of yeah. my head that day so but it is one yeah. it is probably my favorite episode so what what is it that you like about like what is it that that you still re- remember and recall oh just uh uh david warner is like an amazing actor and like you know that was the first time where it's like you know i felt like picard really got to to act and it was just like such a simple episode i mean i don't even remember half except you know obviously ronnie cox is kind of awesome but uh, it's just it's just like two men in a room you know trying to break each other's will yeah. and it's just i don't know it's like i like that sort of tense thriller thing and i think it just came at a, at a time in my my the, just ending college life that it just it had significant meaning for me that episode yeah. But now, I remember, you, like, the Borg, you know, I, I remember when yeah. everybody yelled, the entire dorm yelled when, when they cut the black after fire, you know, all that stuff. That must have been so cool to, to, to have experienced that with, with, like, a group of people that were yeah. super into the show at the same well, time. Oh, yeah, yeah, there were, like, three people in my room, but then you could hear it all the way, like, resonating. <laughs> right. I don't know! <laughs> like, that was it. We went I, out and had beers. <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's perfect yeah, compliment yeah. with Star Trek, right? Exactly. Um, you you had said with uh, in an interview with Mashable that if you do your job right, it looks like you you haven't done anything. Like no one knows what. Did I, what God, you I'm do. a pretentious asshole. Did I say that? <laughs> What's wrong with me? It's it's in the it's in the Mashable. So oh, I, 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 I sure yeah, I did. Like, it sounds like something uh, stupid I'd say. <laughs> like could you? But could you explain like how what what your duties are on the show and just a little bit of like how that works? Well, I mean. That, I'm, uh, you know, obviously, uh, I mean, like, I, uh, you know, I'll be on set and help, like, you know, sort of like make, you know, sometimes like John or John or Seth will have me, you know, if there's like a big, uh, big scene that requires a lot of second unit. And, um, you know, obviously, I sort of, I have been helping with the social marketing stuff, because I happen to be the, 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 the font of information. But, you know, primarily, I'm still the editor, I'm, I'm lead editor, there's three great editors who were with us in the season. Uh, they actually, at one time or another, were my assistant randomly enough, um, but they're all amazing editors. They're all right, Bart, Hillary, and uh, Kevin. And um, yeah, so they would like do an assembly, and then I would come in and cut some scenes, and then I would work with Seth. But um, my, my primary job is, you know, still I'm still an editor and love it. Yeah. So that's most of my time. But there, you know, when you have seven thousand visual effects, and we have a an appointing to the, right. they're leaving soon, but a wonderful VFX team, uh, you know, uh, run by Brooke Nasca and, and um, you know, Brandon Fayette and Eric Hayden, who, you know, they've, they've moved on now for till we get another season. But, um, you know, it's just it's just a big job and it requires a lot of infrastructure. Yeah, I, I was going to say, like, I think maybe outside of Seth himself, is it fair to say that you spend like the most amount of time with with the show in just in editing because of all the VFX oh, and work? Oh, yeah. Into it? Yeah, no, I mean, that's my primary my primary job. So yes, you know, I mean, uh, I, it's, I, yes, I'm a producer because I have to handle producerial stuff, 
sometimes, but yeah, no, I'm here to, I'm here to, I'm here to make sure the picture is cut well. Right. <laughs> and yeah. sometimes I succeed and sometimes I fail. <laughs> uh, I am, I'm loving the new season. Oh, so thank you. I, I, and so you don't know if it's coming back yet? Like, is, is it still sort of under wraps? It's sort of? don't, I, I mean, I don't know, uh, you know, there's probably a lot of things that would, that need to be worked out, but obviously we're all hopeful for it, but uh, you know, it's probably going to take us some time before that determination is made. So yeah. I know people are, you know, tweeting, 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 but it's, it's going to have to evolve in its own time. Yes. So. Yeah. And that's, I mean, it's one of the things that, that initially triggered this discussion was like, I, I feel that the Orville is like in this really unique position yeah. in American television history of, it's almost like you vanished and reappeared in a different timeline. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like, kinda. right. Because with, with the, with the way that things broke down with COVID and we'll go into it like in a few minutes, but uh, I'm curious just on a like super high level, what's, is it relief to have gone back to, to like finally have gone back to the show after the break uh, with COVID to, and then now to see it out there with people watching it? Well, the beauty of it, and this is thanks to uh, a lot of people is that we worked through a good part of the pandemic. We worked till we ran out of things to do. I mean, it got a little tricky towards the end because you know, the, the, we, we sh probably should have kept, never broke, but you know, it's like, there's a, there are financial realities of, of diminished returns and, you know, you know, there's only, you know, but the show was so big and it kind of evolved to get even bigger. So it, there was a break, but it, it, you know, I think we were, we were working solidly into July of 2020 and, and then, and then probably late September, we were, you know, starting to rev back up, even though we didn't shoot till like the end of November. But so we're I'm very fortunate in that way. And honestly, I don't know, we would never got the show done. But it's, um, you know, COVID, there was a COVID tax that really slowed everything down. And uh, also, you know, these scripts were written in 2019. So it's very, you yes. know, thanks to Seth and the writing team that they that they're evergreen. I, I use this term, and someone teased me for it, but it's like evergreen allegory or, you know, whatever, or, or, or uh, yeah, I, I don't know, something to that effect, but, but just that right. these stories still work. Right. I, I think that that's a good, it's a good term for it. Um, let me, let me ask you, cause I, I'll get, let me back up. Yeah, 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 sure. So what, so what brought, so what brought us together was um, I had just sat down to watch the Orville yeah. uh, after over, over wait what like it was August twenty when did when did you wrap production it was August of twenty twenty one August twenty twenty one yeah all right and then debuted shooting. in right right yeah I mean there was there's always tweaks and changes and, yeah. and everything up until uh, and then it premiered in in January was that right like I just want to make sure I've got the the timeline no this 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 season yeah no no Horizon, we premiered but, in June but I mean we stopped we, we stopped right. basic shooting like late August but we've been posting since then so a year right well ten months. Yeah. And so for me, like, it was hard to get into what was going on because of the layoff. Like, it, it was it was really tricky having to sit and remember where things left off. Yeah. No, and I thought that was right? fair. That's yeah. why I answered you. And then uh, and then obviously people were starting to, like, jump on you. I'm like, no, 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 that's just fair. <laughs> it's three years and two months since you've seen a, right. a fresh episode of The Orville. I, 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 this is a valid question. <laughs> Yeah, and so I'm like I'm curious to know like what d going into the launch was there was there a concern that it had been gone for so long? Like oh yeah, I mean sure. I mean I mean it's been you know we've been with it forever, but you know what we're sort of like like we've been living with the season three Orville for three years, yes. and it would be interesting you know like we have had a soft landing to the evolution of the show, uh, others have not. You know, the last they left off, everybody was in those old Kalon suits. And, you know, it, it, it's like it's hard. It's hard for us to get perspective because, like, eventually I forgot what the show looked like, you know, and right. felt like and was like, you know, I have my own opinions about how the show has evolved. And I mean, I love the show. I'll do it. You know, I think it's I think it's amazing. But, you know, I mean, like, I, I'll, you know, sometimes I, I, I'll say this out loud, like I would love a couple more jokes. But, you know, I also think in the places where it's gotten more organically dramatic, I think it's a, it's a vast improvement. So I think overall yes. it's, it's, you know, I, I love the show. I, I mean, I, I mean, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have survived three years, but I didn't love the show and love 
people and love Seth and love all the people I worked for with. So does that answer the question? It does. Hey, it's me, God. I know it's been a while and I haven't been the best dad, especially this century. Well, I was going through some shit and you know what? I'm not going to talk about it. All you need to know is that I'm doing commercials now. I've got bills to pay, too. Do you have any idea how much I just lost on crypto? A lot. A lot. And so now God needs your money. Like, for real this time. Not like all those other times every Sunday. You know who else needs your money? B.J. Mendelssohn. So give them $5 by visiting buymeacoffee.com slash BJ Mendelson. That website again is buymeacoffee.com slash BJ Mendelson. Buymeacoffee.com slash BJ Mendelson. And if you don't give BJ your money, you and I are going to have problems. Big ones. Hi, I'm Mike Reese. I've been writing for The Simpsons for 30 years. But in my spare time, I travel. I've been to Iran, Iraq, the North Pole, the South Pole, Chernobyl. (laughs) These are my vacations, folks. I've even been to North Korea. That's the scary Korea. It's all in my new travel podcast on the Believe Network called What Am I Doing Here? It's fast, it's funny, and it's factual enough. You'll hear how I was robbed in Rio, kidnapped in Honduras, dangled from a cliff in Pakistan, and chased by a lady with a meat cleaver again in Honduras. I had a lot of problems in Honduras. Each week I visit all the world's hot spots and hell holes so you don't have to. You're welcome. Download and subscribe to What Am I Doing Here? wherever you get your podcasts. So, and one of the things that we, you know that had happened was you also switched networks, right? Yes. And I, I think that you had mentioned in, the, in an earlier interview, it was sort of like someone just changing the signs over from like Fox. Oh yeah. Uh, to, to, to Disney. That literally. But I'm, <laughs> yeah, I, at two in the morning. Weird place. <laughs> at two. In, yeah. I believe it. I, I know because I, I left. I, I was working late that night, and I was still at well, like one fifteen. It was still the old signs. Whose job? Whose job was oh, it? Like, the, the vast one. infrastructure of the Fox Studio lot. Oh man! So they keep this lot um, upgrade. It's a beautiful lot. Yeah, but that's because you. I just can, can't imagine that assignment of like having to go around and change the signs. They, well, they had them. They had um, to have them ready. I mean, because they got to yeah. drill them on and off. <laughs> right, right. Now, but for you, like, was the was. Hulu after let's let's like fast forward from like when yeah. what because you did that interview back in 2020 yeah, yeah. Uh, where you had said it was a defensive but now like looking at it in 2022 was there a change uh from switching over to Hulu uh I mean in terms of how we make the show no I mean we we don't have the run times anymore and obviously we have more of a sandbox to play in but you know some of the some of the Disney they used to be Fox Disney people are still with us uh you know especially like fox post and stuff so they knew the show from before so the continuity was there and we've been fortunate that both on the fox slash disney side and on the hulu side there's a lot of nice people i'm not saying that because that's the political thing to say like thank god because you could you could run into that in in shows and places but like you know they're all very willing to help let us help us do our thing uh and um, so it isn't as traumatic as one would think. Right. So yeah, I'm curious because um, the third season has some pretty big dramatic swings. In yeah. It. Uh, I'm just thinking of like the episode that was on uh, last week at the time of this recording uh, with Malloy going back yeah. and, and wanting, choosing to stay. And so I, I was kind of curious, like what, that's one of the episodes that was written because some of the episodes were written before. Is oh, that right? Like you were writing before. it. They're they were all, all written, we, okay. They so, were mainly written before we shot, or and maybe there was there were right. there were touch ups as we went. But basically, I think either all or ten out of the eleven were completely written. Oh wow! And then the eleven became is the one that, that's now a book. No, right? no, no. Like nine is a book. 
Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. So just in the order that so people watching at home. So like after episode eight is when they should read. the That's book. That's when they is should that... read the book. And the, and the book, I like I said, it, I'm sh- the 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 novelization is amazing. I'm so sorry that we couldn't pull that one off, but COVID really did screw that. We tried to rep. We were going to shoot yes. it. I, I don't want to say too much. We were going to shoot it overseas. It's a whole thing. It was even. I mean, even money was spent. There's storyboards. I think I put a few out. Like we were we were into it, but then just everything, you know. Right. What was that? What was that moment like when when you knew th- these episodes were written, but then everything had to be had to shut down? Like, what was that like in terms of your work? Oh, it was just and, a mad, it was a mad scramble because I, you know, I think at the time society, not everybody was on the same page. Uh, I happened to have people in my life that were sort of ahead of the curve, and they sort of got me ahead of the curve. So we started maybe a week before the shutdown. We started. Well, uh, we should maybe come up and, with a plan, but there, you know, not everybody, some people are like, oh, I'll be back in two weeks. Or some people are like, oh, this is fine. Or is it cold or whatever? I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying anything politically, but like, you yeah. know, it's not like everybody knows what COVID is now. Everybody was sort of trying to figure it out. So it's sort of, you know, we, we were all winging it for about a month and it took us a while to like build an infrastructure from our homes, you know, right. to be able to continue working. That was, and, that, and that's, oh, sorry, no, no. that's, that's it. Uh, so, so you took the so you took the work home. Like, so what was that like having to just re-engineer, not working at an office, and then doing all well, this VFX? You know, it's all the stuff. Like, you know, I, I probably use Zoom twice before. Like, we're not a Zoom right, kind of people, right. and, you know what I mean? So, trying to get used to that, or like, uh, you know, trying to do like speed tests and trying to figure out the infrastructure. Like, there, there, there were some remote systems in place, like Evercast, that had it very well. But, you know. Seth has a certain, you know, Seth likes a certain kind of interactivity and, you know, we're doing a lot of detail work. So, you know, we didn't know about Clearview until about a week and a half into figuring this out. And that's, you know, we use a Clearview system, which is, uh, forget who the hell makes Clearview. Who makes Clearview? Uh, SohoNet. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know why I say I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and clear, and by the way, uh, 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 Evercast is a great, is absolutely great system. And thank God, because a lot of people use that to survive as well. But, uh, you know, like we just had to build an infrastructure from our from home, while also worrying right. about our families and our own lives. So it was, yes. I don't know, it's almost like it was happening too fast to think about it. Yeah. So uh, I'm curious, like, what, what, how did it impact you on on the home front? Like, was it, did you find that like you had to shift your day around well, in terms of things I, that were getting done? In the gray part is that I was home more, so I, I people in my life had access to me. On the bad part is is that. You know, everything blends. And I mean, it blends anyway. We work in Hollywood, so, you know, it's a 24-7 kind of place. But, you know, time has no meaning for a lot of reasons. <laughs> right, exactly. And, uh, you know, I think some of that that ethic has come into this, I, I don't want to say post-pandemic. I'm one of those people that, like, yeah, sorry, I'm not trying to get political, but, like. Oh, no, we're, we're still, still in it. I still tell people. We're still and in it for another year. you do what you want. Do your thing. You want to wear a mask, you do. But I'm saying is we, we, we're not really out of it. So it's like, I don't feel like there's been a cutoff, at least for how we work yeah. like you know we're still getting tested it's like the lot's still half empty it's like we never really like um, uh, february 2019 didn't just pop back in so um right so that sort of working style like you know i can edit anywhere which is amazing and also yeah. not amazing <laughs> but you know i wouldn't ever go back so right okay so that so i'm curious like how how has it changed your process? I mean, like, like I said, we, we still have the year left of COVID until the pan coronavirus vaccine yeah, is yeah. Out, widely available for everyone. Uh, but how has it changed now that you are back in the office? Like, how has it changed how you approach the show and how well, you work on it's it? It's still, it's still, it's still, a lot of it is still the same. I mean, honestly, I miss having like, you know, you know, obviously I see Seth and mixes and things, but I miss having him behind me and just like throwing a joke sure. behind me or just like, you know, there's like a great thing about being all together. It's, you know, you know, for even on set when you're like, you know, you're talking like this in a set and it's like, you don't see people's faces or right. minutia reactions. And, um, you know, that, that loss, you know, I, we're a very organic, uh, pro, you know, sport process. We, uh, I think, you know, that's why I love working on shows that are shoot where I edit. Like I've been fortunate that I was able to do a job for a long time where I, I could walk over to set and, and actual people knew me as the editor. There's shows where they don't know who the hell it is for, life except for the couple of showrunners so um so that process hasn't changed but the same thing that's made covid tricky for everyone else has made it for us it's just 
things are a little less personal. Right. And I think people don't realize that the Hollywood is still pretty, pretty stringent about getting yeah. tested and everyone wearing a mask and stuff. And which is, which is kind of a relief because you know, a lot of industries went back to like yeah. the pre COVID days. Well, it costs, it costs a uh, lot of money. Uh, I mean, you know, too, it's business. It's not just like, yes. they, they want to keep people safe, but also like, you know, you, you super spread a show and they go down for four days, you know, I mean, shows can cost a couple hundred, half a million. I mean, shows can cost a lot of money, not right. shoot for a week. So it's easier yeah. to, to just get people tested. <laughs> Absolutely. And so let me ask you, so the scripts were locked in 2019. Yeah. And then well, lot, lot. when did, I mean, when did yeah. she, right. Yeah. I, I'm yeah. Finished yeah. enough. Right. Let's say like, like finished or ready, ready yeah. enough where, what was it? So what was it like coming back to it with this, with this knowledge of how the world had changed, right? Because you, you, the Orville began a year after Trump went into yeah. office um, and you're returning with, with him out uh, and now hopefully being tried. Um, I don't keep my fingers crossed mm-hmm. on that. Um, and then you've got this global disease. Like, so I'm just curious, like the entire world changed between times that the Orville left the air and it returned. And so I'm curious, like, did that inform the work when you returned? Like when um, everyone returned? Did it didn't inform the work. You know, I'm going to compliment our writers because they, they sort of looked like, uh, they looked like fortune tellers. Um, <laughs> Uh, I think aside from, I think aside from, and I can't even remember if it's still in the final scene from Leighton saying the pandemic, cause we, you know, we, we know we, we, we didn't want to like, you know, in the future, it's 300 years from now, we're not going to talk about the minutia of the day, you know, like, yes. you know, we're not talking, you know, whatever happened in 1756 that year, we're not, you're not, the odds are you, you know, talking about it 300 years later or slim. I mean, like, you know, we already sort of like bend the rules a little bit by talking about like pop culture and things that may or may not fade. So I don't, it it didn't, it didn't, I mean, it informed us how, you know, Oh, well that, that was on the nose or, Oh, (laughs) you know, or, Oh, that, that, you know, the internet has gotten more their reaction to, uh, things, you know, people have more opinions now and are not afraid to share them like that evolved a lot in three years. So there, you can't do anything without somebody commenting on it. And that's okay. That's part of the ecosystem. But like you literally can't say or do anything without someone making a post about it. And you have to be, yes, that's something you have to be mentally prepared for. And that, that was the difference. Well, is there anything that you did? Like, have you tried any mindfulness or anything to prepare the hand? Like, to, how do you deal with, uh, knowing that there's going to be a comment, uh, no matter just, what you do, we just joke about it too. I mean, it's fine. <laughs> and honestly, we have an amazing fan base. And even I say this yes. out loud, like most of our detractors are, are, uh, are you know, they can make good points. I mean, sometimes you know you can pretty much tell if someone's just being mean to be mean. And like, all right, right. if that's what you got to do, fine. But I'm not going to engage her. I'm like, you know, I'm not going to like you do. You be you. But, you know, sometimes people don't like the show or they don't like something and they have an articulate reason. And that stuff's great because it actually helps inform you and maybe change it or, you know, listening. But, uh, you know, I'm on the Internet. <laughs> I expect people to say silly <laughs> yes. things. I mean, I've been pretty lucky. It's like most people are really nice to me and I try and pay it back. So, I, don't, I you know, I don't I don't get bent out of shape. I mean, like as long as someone's not saying something personally about a cast member or a crew member or like just being outright hostile or, you know, or mean, right. then, you know, you want to say the show, you don't like the show, you go with yourself. And, you know, I might even agree with you on that specific point. Who knows? <laughs> so. Right. What, what was it like? Cause I know there's a quick COVID isn't mentioned by name in episode six, but they do, there is a reference yeah. to the pandemic. I'm curious, like where that where that came about, or was that just something that, like, as you were filming it, it, it just sort of. Uh, no, in? I think we put it. I think that was filmed post pandemic, so we put it in because it was so close that uh, it, you know that made sense narratively to to reference right. it. Uh, that that yeah, and it was done, it was oh, done, sorry, oh sorry, 
that it was done in, in a really like there's I know there's been this question among writers of like how do you address the pandemic? Do you address it at all? Like you know, it's sort of like Law and Order where you'll see uh, signs in the background saying everyone yeah. must wear a mask, but none of the principal nobody's what no like nobody acknowledges right. that it's just sort of in the background versus head on acknowledging it. But that was. I thought it was really well done, right? Because it was just a quick, like, you know, when the pandemic came, you were, it's like well, you knew it was coming. Like, it was just done. Thank you. I mean, it makes, it just makes sense for the character. There, that's a, There's a lot going on in the last five years. So it makes sense that right. when she's making this realization that if you imagine that, a, a, you know, a guy from space knew exactly how to handle this, you, you might get suspicious. So that, so there wasn't right. like, hey, let's talk about the pandemic. I mean, I, I didn't write it, but it's like, no one was like, oh, this is a terrible idea. It's like. It's 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 natural given that it's 2025. Yes, I thought it was really organic, and I think that's probably what we'll see yeah. in the future from other shows. Is just you know if it's yeah. organic. Yeah, but there's we'll nothing coming it. up where um, like that you know like Isaac's going to be on the computer and they're going to start talking about like KN95 <laughs> or something. It's like it's not like it's not, that's not <laughs> happening. <laughs> We're, we're so we're not going to see Isaac. No, no, no. Well, he's got a face <laughs> mask. <laughs> Barely. Right, poor, exactly. poor Mark. Yeah, um, I that is my favorite oh, character on that show. The, 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 wonderful. the deadpan responses is, yeah. is so good. Like he doesn't give any of the characters an inch. Um, so I imagine our, it's a our, our cast write, is amazing, I, and they're they're all kings of the deadpan. I mean, uh, between Peter, uh, Penny, uh, Jay Lee, and Mark. I mean, they all everybody. I shouldn't say, but like particularly the uh, the, the 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 straight read, knowing full well what they're saying. That's a talent. Yeah. So, absolutely. Uh, is there anything that that you want fans to know about the absence of the show? Um, just something about like that you continue working. On? Like I'm just curious what what you would say to fans who who were patiently waiting for so long. Oh, thank you <laughs> to the twelve people that stayed. <laughs> right? Uh, no, yeah. no, I no, I I understand where people can, you know. It's almost like a, a relationship that hasn't been nurtured for a long time. Like I can understand where people would start drifting away. So everybody, we kind of knew once we started energizing back up that people would be like, ah, oh, all right, screw it. Sure. Okay. Hi. Nice to see you again. Right. But you know, we don't want to, we don't want to take that for granted and we didn't take it for granted. We kind of knew. So that, that's the thing is that I think everybody here appreciates that everyone still is interested after such a long time, but at the same time too, I think we, and I should say the big, the big guy have proven that we use the time wisely. So yes, there's that. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's telling, you know, like you hit the nail on the head that it seems like the writers were, were psychic, yeah. well, right? They're, like, they're like they were, writers, so, uh, the, the, these scripts, you know, they, I mean, it's a testament that, that they didn't take a ding after sitting around for three years. Yeah, so it's true. Um, my, my, my last question for you is: what What do you enjoy most about working on the show? Like, what is what is the thing that makes you happiest? Oh, there's a well. There's a few. There's a few things. I mean, I, I love working for Seth. He's he's uh, you know he's a really he's a really smart dude, and he's you know he's one of those guys that's like four steps ahead. He doesn't like to admit it, but like you know you sometimes would be like, you really want to do that? Like, what's that? But he actually knows that this thing's going to work. And you just, in some sense, have to go on faith and follow the train. Um, I've worked with some great crew and cast, and the producer, like, just lucked out. They're ninety-eight percent of everybody around here is super nice, and and really fun, and probably all functioning alcoholics. Now I'm just sorry, kid, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> kidding, uh, mostly. Um, but uh, yeah, no, that's the thing. And obviously, I love sci-fi, and you know. I mean, I got to do things that I would never dream, you know, I only dreamed of as a kid, you know, like, I'm, right. Yeah. You know, I don't want to like nerd out on certain people, but it's like, it's like that kind of stuff. Like, ah, you know, you're that guy. Yeah. You're that person. Okay. And play with, you know, toys. Like, it, you know, I still have the, you know, I'm still have this, you know, that's the, that's Isaac's thing. Nice. That I, you know, like I have it here. I don't have, a, I have to unscrew it to turn it on, but you know, stuff like that. <laughs> And this is actually, you know, we, this was one of the few props that didn't change from season one. So remember they were tinkering with it. So this actually, you can actually do, yes. the, do the thing. So, yeah. Ah, interesting. There you go. See, I, I love it. Um, 
thank you so much. I'm going to, I'll press, sure. oh, before I, before I, where, where can we find you? Like, where can we find you online? Where can we follow uh, you? You can find uh, Tom the Orville at Instagram and um, I guess I'm Tom Costantino. I, I'm sort of, I've been jokingly put stuff on TikTok if you get bored, but I'm just around. <laughs> I'm just around. I'll be, I, you know, I'm always uh, in between edits or something. I mean, you know, like I'll see, I'll see a notification come up and just try and answer people back. That's kind of how I do it. Probably unhealthy. That's very cool. uh, probably, no, but thanks. we appreciate it. Uh, I think that the fan, if, just from the research I was doing prior to the interview, I was like, clearly the fans love the show, love They're the great. people on the show. Um, they've got their they've got their own wiki. You I have your own page on there, so like I think that. Yeah, so I think that they feel they they know the effort and the heart. They're, that great. You're They're honestly, I, I will say that um, I know you got to go too. It's like they are they are great. They are truly a great bunch of people they are really respectful and i like to tease sometimes but like i feel very blessed that i got it at work and i got it on the internet so well that's our show our apologies to the band very sorry we just uh we ran out of time you know things happen it's the nature of the biz but hey listen do you uh you got a minute Okay, come on. I know you do. Like, you're chilling. You're big chilling. You're just sitting here listening to the podcast, right? So why don't you take a mosey on over, you know? And just leave us a little leave us a little review, you know? No, 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 listen. I know. I know, I know, I know, I know. Everybody asks you guys to leave a review. Everybody's all about leave a review on our podcast and everything. But let me tell you, man, it really helps. You know, it helps get the word out about all of your favorite shows. You know, so, like, what, what are you waiting for? Take out your phone. Leave us a review. And, uh... No. Hey! But, hey, I thought I told you to stop smoking that shit around here. All right, you want to go? Okay, man. All right, bud. Let's throw hands. Let's do this. Bro, I sit around waiting to fucking fight you, bro. Let's go. I'll fucking crush you. I <sighs> hurt <laughs> Hey, you. <laughs> oh, are you guys still listening? Whew, make sure to leave us that review. We gotta get the hell out of here, man. This guy's aggressive. Okay, your 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 middle name is Macho. But uh, I'm wondering if you ever cry. You ever has a macho man ever cried? Oh yeah. Really? Uh-huh. It's okay for macho men to show every emotion available right there, you know, because I've cried a thousand times, I'm gonna cry some more. But I've soared with the eagles, and I've slithered with the snakes, and I've been everywhere in between. And I'm going to tell you something right now. There's one guarantee in life, and that there are no guarantees. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I understand this. <laughs> yeah. Nobody likes a quitter. Nobody said life was easy. So if you get knocked down, take the standing eight count, get back up, and fight again. Did you enjoy today's show? If you did, please take a minute and leave us a review. Yes, we know you're busy and every podcast asks you to do this, but there's a good reason they do. Because every time you leave a review, that review helps more people find and listen to the show. And you know what that means for you? More great episodes of Weiwo.tv. So what are you waiting for? Take out your phone and leave us a review right now before you move on to something else and forget about us. And we'll see you next time, right?